This is the uh, third in a series of uh, video clips designed to show you around the Formula KS3 knock analyzer and in this video clip I want to demonstrate the device uh, and show you it working. So um, in order to do that um, normally what we would have is uh, a knock sensor plugged straight into the side here via a signal cable and um, obviously the device would, would take settings from there, sorry take readings from there um, but we wouldn't be able to hear them. So what I want to be able to do is to allow uh, you to hear the um, signal from the knock sensor. So what I've done is I've actually recorded um, that signal um, and, and sampled it so we can actually play it back to the device. But not only can we play it back to the device, we can also hear it as well. So you'll be able to hear the engine knocking um, and you'll also be able to hear the sample of the engine working without knock. Um, now, in order to be able to do that, um, and in real life, in order to be able to hear the engine uh, knocking, what we have is uh, another product, which is the Knock Analyzer Pro. Um, and this works in conjunction with the KS3. It can actually be plugged in directly to the KS3. And if you're involved in tuning um, and you want to modify settings on your vehicle um, and adjust the boost or, or change the fueling, um, we strongly recommend you use a product such as this in conjunction with the KS3. Um, this will allow you to plug in a set of headphones um, and the sensor cable to the um, to the KS3 and that means you'll be able to hear exactly what the KS3 is listening to and you'll be able to hear your engine uh, and if there are any issues with knock um, you'll be able to hear them. Now the reason why we'd much prefer you to use this device as opposed to the KS3 for mapping your engine is that if the uh, knock sensor uh, that's attached to the KS3 is not in a particularly good uh, position you may not pick up uh, the early stages or, or knock early in the rev range um, whereas obviously by listening to knock um, you'll be able to pick them up and you'll be able to distinguish them so it's purely a case that um, this device is used for mapping engines and this device is used as a warning device and that's how we'd like to, to um, recommend the products are used now, the Knock Analyzer Pro has uh, settings, has uh, sorry, has ports on the side for uh, headphones and uh, the uh, Knock Sensor cable. We've also got a power on and off and uh, adjustable volume. So, in order for you to be able to hear the engine knocking, um, usually you'd obviously have a set of headphones on. Um, in this instance, and for this demonstration, uh, we're going to pass the headphone jack straight into a set of speakers so we'll be able to hear the uh, engine knock and we'll also be able to display the results on the KS3. Okay so what we have here is the uh, the KS3 which is plugged into uh, the uh, power supply we've also got the uh, knock sensor cable going in here We've got the Knock Analyzer Pro attached via this cable so it goes round um, and those two are attached together. Um, so the Knock Analyzer Pro can listen to exactly the same signal that the KS3 is listening to. And we've also got the headphone output going to a set of speakers. Um, I'm just going to try and make this a bit clearer to see. So we'll move that out the way and zoom in on here then hopefully you'll get a much clearer much clearer shot of um, there we go okay so the first thing I'm going to do is I've got a sample which was taken from a Nissan S13 so um, a CA18 um, and what we'll do is we'll play uh, the sample back to the KS3 which is basically the engine um, going around the complete rev range under load um, with uh, with no knock. <coughs> now, what might seem strange is that um, we've actually received a, a reading on here that says that um, it, it, it read knock, but in actual fact, what this device is doing is um, it's picking up all the frequencies um, that are 
uh, we've currently got it to 6.5 kilohertz. So it's it's trying to detect those frequencies, and obviously within the engine, we've got a lot of background noise. We've got the valve train noise, etc. So the way that we set it up is that you set um, a threshold value. So in this case. Um, what what we've said and what we recommend is that you try and achieve by adjusting the gain, try and achieve a value of around about 40. So what I'm going to do is just reset that. So we just press the job dial inwards and it sets everything back. I'll replay the same signal. And as you can see, we get very similar readings, and this time uh, it read 40. That's what um, what the device was originally configured for. Um, so now what I'd like to do is we're going to play back um, a, uh, a signal which is from the same engine, but where we significantly increase the boost to um, induce debt. I'll just reset it again so we start from zero. Oh. Wrong clip. Uh, here we go. Now, as you can see, we achieved a value of 93. Um, around about four seconds into that clip, there was um, some knock. I'm not sure whether or not you heard it. I'll play it again, and I'll just indicate with my finger when when the uh, when the knock comes in. Oops. I'll just get the clip again. Just at that point, it's the uh, the classic kind of rattling noise in the background that you can hear, um, and we can we can play that through again just as a. So what you can see is that we've achieved a, a significantly higher value of 93, um, and what we'll do now is so there we go. What we'll do now is um, we'll basically uh, adjust the uh, alerts within the device so that uh, the device will actually trigger and we'll get the warnings that we'd like to see. So we'll scroll through the settings and where alerts is set off. We know that um, when the engine's running normally we know that 40 is fine we'll just put in a little margin in there so we'll say that um, the device won't actually go off unless we get anything greater than, than 50. So what we can do now is go back and play the uh, initial run with no detonation. And now what we'll do is play the run where we'd induce detonation. As you can see, the alarm's gone off. Um, we've got a, a clear visual indicator that the alarm's gone off. So um, even if whilst you were uh, doing that run, you, you for whatever reason uh, missed the visual warning um, you've you've got a, a clear visual warning here that says um, the alarm's been triggered um, and that's simply reset just by by tapping it inside again so I hope that's given you a uh, quick demonstration of the product um, for more information please visit our website